Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the lecture series on bioenergy. So, we are in the module 2, let us get back to the slide, a concept called Hill reaction. So, what re Hill reaction is all about? So, this was in 1939. So, while these reactions were clear up in 1941 and 1950s, 1939 Robert Hill discovered that isolated chloroplast. So, he could manage to isolate the chloroplast. Isolated chloroplast led to the evolution of oxygen. Okay. So, what he did? So, what he observed is that when he took an isolated chloroplast like this and illuminated it with light okay, in the presence of and what he did that he has a suitable electron acceptor in the form of ferricyanide. And what he found out that ferricyanide is reduced to ferrocyanide, ferrocyanide. So, this is the ferro and this is the ferry. Okay. So, there are three points what he dissected out. He dissected photosynthesis by showing that oxygen evolution can occur without reduction of CO2. In other word, in other word what is important here CO2 plus H2O, CH2O plus H2, uh, sorry, plus oxygen. This reaction, what you see here is independent of the other reaction. Does it make sense? So, it means this H2O to oxygen evolution is totally independent as compared to the reaction of CO2 forming CH2O. This was one of the landmark thing and that why it is so significant for us to understand is that this one reaction leads to the whole area of inorganic chemists who are, who are pretty much dedicated all their life, many of them on developing water splitting cluster. They are developing different kind of water splitting clusters where they are trying to generate hydrogen as fuel. And we will talk later about this, some of the works which are done in India as well as abroad by different people on artificial leaf. Whereas, the other fragment So, if you get back to the slide, if you look at it. So, this is the area where tremendous amount of work is happening across the world in terms of developing what we call as artificial lift and some of the landmark discoveries were done in India as well as an abroad and we will highlight about all those things. You can, those of you are very keen, you can go through the website of Daniel Nosara in MIT, he has done some very seminal work in that area. Where is the other side, which is, if you see this reaction, this part of the reaction. This is what falls under another emerging area of carbon sequestration. So, you see a simple reaction which is happening in nature, which is deceptively simple reaction as I am telling you from the beginning, opens up some of the most uh, uh, invested areas of research in the modern science. How to sequester carbon? Thumb rule has been sh already shown by nature, where converting carbon dioxide it into carbohydrates, whereas the other reaction which is actually supporting this reaction 
in unison where the water is getting split and evolving oxygen as a byproduct and generating electrons which supports the other reaction of reduction of CO2 to carbohydrates. So, they are all interlinked and that is one of the reason why a basic fundamental understanding of photosynthesis is critical for understanding the biomass technology. Now, talking about the Hill reaction where we started this, let us explore a little bit further about Hill reaction, what are the other areas, aspects which Hill reactions talked about. So, so this is the basic reaction what Hill showed us 2 H 2 plus this is where the ferrocyanide to ferrocyanide reaction 3 plus in the eliminated chloroplast leading to oxygen plus 4 H plus which is the protons plus 4 F E 2 plus. So, here is that reduction reaction what is happening, what was shown by Hill. The second aspect this reaction, Hill reaction confirmed was the evolved oxygen as we have already talked about evolved oxygen comes from water, not from carbon dioxide. Okay. Third aspect which was shown by Hill reaction is that isolated chloroplast, isolated chloroplast can perform significant partial reaction of photosynthesis. Partial reaction of, I am just showing photosynthesis as P s. Okay. And the fourth and most critical point which will be critical for us to look now, it revealed that the primary event in photosynthesis is light driven and the transfer of electron, electron transfer from one substrate to another, S stand for substrate is thermodynamically uphill and this is something against the gradient. So, it means the electron transfer is happening not down the gradient all the time, it happens up the gradient. So, that needs a lot of energy, it is almost like you are pulling a bucket of water all the way uphill, that is essentially what does that mean, a thermodynamic thermodynamically uphill phenomena where you have to invest energy you know to raise the bucket or raise the electron to a higher energy state. Okay. So, this is what is very very critical about this whole process of uh, photosynthesis which was very nicely summarized by the Hill reaction. Now, from here we will move on Let's move the slide to the Next aspect what we talked about was two light reactions interact. So, now this is, so what we talked about is two light reactions interact in photosynthesis. We have talked about two light reactions, you remember we talked about one photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. So, how this was being figured out is something like this, I am drawing a, so here you have the wavelength on the x axis 400, 520, 600, 680 okay. and on the other side 
we will be talking about the oxygen evolution or the quantum yield or oxygen evolved per photon or in other word this is also called the quantum yield of photosynthesis. Okay. So, what you observed in this is a very interesting aspect in it. So, what you see out here and something called a red drop. Why is it so? Now, what does this red drop signifies? So, what it says is that <coughs> photosynthesis require interaction of two light reactions as we have already mentioned, okay, for system 1 and for system 2 and both of them can be driven by light of wavelength less than 680 nanometer, but only one of them by light of longer wavelength. And interestingly, the one which is driven by light of longer wavelength is the one which is involved in what we call as the dark reaction, driving the dark reaction which is photosystem 1. So, in the next slide, this why you see this red drop will be very clear to you. If I draw the next, uh, just go down on the next slide. So, to summarize what does that mean and how, this will make everything clear to you. So, here you have photosystem 1, PS1, you are shining light on it which is wavelength less than 700 nanometer okay. and you have another photosystem PS2. which is getting light less than 680 nanometer, just let me correct this nanometer. Okay. Now, what is generated out here is a strong reductant in the form of NADPH. which is NADPH and uh, one second and a weak oxidant in the form of ATP, whereas the fort system 2 you have a weak reductant in the form of ATP again, whereas there is a strong oxidant in the form of oxygen. So, the weak oxidant and weak reductant is an ATP. Now, if you look at this reaction very carefully, you will realize. So, Coming back to the slide, let me add one more point to this, which will make you understand. So, out here underneath it is the water splitting cluster. Now, this part functions at less than 680 nanometer, which is directly involved in evolution of oxygen. Now, if you see the previous red drop graph, now you observe what you are, how you are quantifying, you are quantifying based on oxygen evolution. So, beyond 680, the oxygen evolution is going to go down, there will be a red drop, yet the photosystem absorbs light. Why it is absorbing light? 
Now, coming back to this picture, because between 680 and 700, 680 to 700, photosystem 1 is functional. So, what you see a red drop, you see a red drop out here because of this one out here. Photosystem 2 only functions at 680 and less and photosystem 2's oxygen evolution is what we use as a quantifying or scale for measuring the quantum efficiency or photosynthetic efficiency. But try to understand the two points here, but that does not rule out that the chloroplast is not going to absorb light. It is going to absorb light because between 680 and 700 nanometer photosystem 1 is absorbing light where it is producing a very strong reductant in the form of NADPH which is eventually taking part into the Calvin cycle which will be coming later where the real biomass formation is taking place where CO2 the sequestration is taking place. Now, this brings us to a point three aspects what we will be dealing now. What, what we will be dealing now is once again, let me so now at this stage, let us draw the three more aspects what we will be dealing. Our next goal will be to one outline of electron transfer between photosystem 1 and photosystem 2, which of course, you can also mention as uh, 680 and 700, uh, sorry, let us take it one second, 700 or 680 the outline of electron transport with respect to the redox potential. This is one aspect what we will be dealing with now. Second thing we will talk about water splitting cluster involved in out here at underneath photosystem 2 at 680. Okay. Then we will talk about the th third which is this part and how this one is governing the Calvin cycle. or the dark reaction of photosynthesis where CO2 to carbohydrate or the carbon sequestration which is happening. And from here we will talk about C3 and C4 plants and what we learn from them. So, after crossing through this whole thing, now we have reached to a point where we will, I have already highlighted what all we will be going to discuss. We will discuss about next two classes that will be our target area. We will discuss about uh, the transfer of electrons along the cluster. We will talk about the water splitting process which is happening underneath photosystem 2 and we will talk about the Kelvin cycle and that will summarize our this module. So, after this, these are the three points. So, please go through what all we have covered just to summarize for you people. So, we talked about the basic architecture of a leaf where the or a plant cell, we have not still talked. So, in the plant cell, we talked about the basic architecture of the chloroplast. We talked about the arrangement of the thylakoid membrane 
and within the thylakoid membrane, okay, let me, let's coming back to the slide once again. And here also we will talk about a little bit more out here, just as, as, as part of this, how proton gradient is created. This is very important. So, it just uh, slipped out. So, this is another thing which we will be talking about, which actually leads to generation of the ATP. Okay. So, so, we talked about the architecture of the chloroplast. We talked about the how it was discovered that there are photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. It is further how it was discovered that there are uh, two different kind of chlorophyll molecule, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. We talked about in depth about the reaction center and how it was observed that after this much illumination, you only get this much oxygen. So, it means all the chlorophyll molecules are not involved post excitation into oxygen evolution. Then we talked about the Hill reaction, where we kind of, you know, split that whole reaction of CO2 plus H2O into two parts and showed that they are two independent events, where carbon dioxide is converted into carbohydrate is one part, whereas water is splitting and evol evolving oxygen is another part, which is part two of it. So, there are two separate events which are happening all together, which are not interlinked with each other or tweaked with each other, two separate events. And from there, we talked about the overall schema of things, where we talked about for system 1, where it is producing a very potentially very strong reductant in the form of NADPH, whereas for system 2, which is forming a very strong oxidant in the form of oxygen, whereas both of them are generating a mutually a weak reductant and a weak oxidant in the form of adenosine triphosphate or ATP molecule that got generated because of the proton gradient which is formed there. And in between you now you talked about the red drop, why? Because the quantum efficiency or the photosynthetic efficiency is a function of oxygen evolution. So, if you kind of you know shine light beyond 680 nanometer, there would not be any further evolution of oxygen. Instead, there will be only absorption of light and that will only reduce the photosynthetic efficiency. So, what you will be observing is that there will be a red drop in terms of oxygen evolution, we talked about it. So, based on that, we put this outline for the next couple of classes, this is what we are going to deal with, the outline of the electron transfer between for system 1 and for system 2, this is what we will be dealing, part 1 and follow up it with with respect to the redox potential and how the gradient is created and how ATP is generated. Second, what we will be dealing what will be the water splitting cluster, which is present underneath photosystem 2 or at PS 680. And the third thing what we will be dealing with will be NADPH as a strong reductant driving the Kelvin cycle or the dark reaction, where carbon sequestration taking place and followed by C 3 and C 4 plant. So, these are the three aspects what we will be dealing with. So, I will close in here and we will take up these three topics in the subsequent two lectures where we will wind up this module. Thank you.